Good day, my name is Tian Gildenreis and in this video I would like to discuss the extremely important subject of what is righteousness all about. Because many people say, yes, righteousness means I'm in right standing with God. Righteousness means I'm justified by God just as if I had never sinned. Yes, the Bible says we are justified by faith, through our faith in Christ Jesus. But righteousness, there's something more. What does the word righteousness really mean? And this is what we will discuss on this video. And I really pray that the Holy Spirit will also break it open for you. But my dear friends, it is always about our Lord Jesus Christ, because He is the only one that teaches us about His righteousness and wants us to live in His righteousness. So because it is all about Him, let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. We know the Bible says we two or three are gathered in my name. I am in their midst. So, Lord, we know you are here where we're busy with this production, but you are also there where people will be watching this video, wherever it might be. And we pray that you alone will be glorified. We pray that you alone will be exalted, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit will take me out of the way, that I will not be the one speaking, but that your Holy Spirit will speak in and through me so that your name can be glorified. And thank you, Father, for giving us the authority to say to Satan, we bind your works now. This is holy ground where people will be busy with this video. You will not steal the message from the ears of the children of God and you will leave in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will cover us with your blood now, that you will set up your angels all around us and that you yourself will be a wall of fire round about us so that every place we're busy with this video will be a safe place and that we will hear what your Holy Spirit wants to teach us. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Please take us by the hand and lead us now. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in this video, we're going to discuss the following four points. Number one, where does righteousness come from? Number two, what must I do with righteousness? Number three, what are the consequences of righteousness? And number four, and from here onward. And I always start with this verse in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 13. And I only use the Old King James Version Bible. And I read there, my Bible says, For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. And today you will read what the Bible says about righteousness. And you will see that you will be able to acknowledge, to understand what it says just as it is written. And I trust you shall acknowledge it even to the end. Because in Matthew 22 verse 29, Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. And unfortunately, that is the problem with most of us Christians. That's the same problem I had. I erred because I did not know the scriptures. And why did I not know the scriptures? Because I did not know the author of the scriptures. And only when I got to meet the Lord Jesus personally, 21 years ago now in 1999, I got to know His scriptures because His Holy Spirit gave me a new hunger to read the Bible for myself. And when I started to read the Bible for myself, truths like these that I'm discussing in this video became truth to me. And I could start to live according to that. And suddenly I also started to know the power of God in my personal life. The power of God in normal everyday circumstances, but also the power of God in the war that we are in against Satan and his demons. And I praise the Lord Jesus for that. We must understand one thing. I'm showing you a slide there now. And I always say with all due respect, I see that our God, our Father, stands on two legs. The one leg is the grace leg. And the other leg is the righteousness leg. But unfortunately, most people today just want to hear about His grace. They don't want to hear anything about His righteousness. And you'll see today why that will be. But if you see what Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says, it says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So yes, by grace we are saved, by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And if you have not yet received the Lord Jesus in your life, at the end of this video, there will be a prayer that you can pray so that you can also receive Him and also ask Him to start to reveal His scriptures to you through His Holy Spirit. And then you can also start to live a life of sanctification in righteousness so that God can be glorified in your life. Because so many people just want to hear about grace. 
They just want to hear how good God is and how He loves them just as they are and all that. But no, 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 my dear friends, look on that slide. There is another leg. The other leg is the righteousness leg. And we read in Matthew 6 verse 33, it is written, But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And many times when I quote that verse to people, they immediately proceed to say, And all these things shall be added unto you. Then I say to them, no, 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 you are missing a little part there. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So don't miss the part there that says, seek the kingdom and his righteousness. And we will see today what his righteousness is all about. I use the eSword program on my computer that shows you the different meanings for the words in Greek or in Hebrew. And I did a word search and I saw that there are 159 verses about grace in the Bible and 289 verses about righteousness. And if we just make a mathematical calculation and we look at this in the balance, what is in God's eyes the most important? Definitely is righteousness a bit more important than grace. If we see that we put this next to each other, there are 159 verses about grace and 289 verses about righteousness. Now the question is, what is righteousness? And I listened to a preacher once giving a, a loose definition on righteousness. And he said righteousness is God's way of doing things. And suddenly... That word righteousness exploded in my spirit. What he said testified with my spirit. And immediately I understood for the first time what the word righteousness means according to the word of God. Yes, it is God's way of doing things. God's way of living in my marriage. God's way of living with people outside. Going around with people around me. God's way. Righteousness is God's way. And we will see today what that means because it's not just God's way. It is everything that God is that encompasses God. Righteousness is His name. Righteousness comes from His mouth. His throne stands upon righteousness, the Bible says. So there is so much to learn about righteousness. And I pray that this message will touch you in the heart in the name of Jesus. At number one, let us now look at where does righteousness come from? Isaiah 45 verse 23 says, I have sworn by myself, this is God speaking. He says, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So that's one word that God speaks in righteousness that every knee upon this earth shall bow before him and every tongue shall swear that he is God. That will happen. You can either do it voluntarily now out of your own free will or one day when you will be forced to bow and proclaim that he is God before the throne of God. So I would rather choose to do it voluntarily now because he is my king, my Lord, and my savior. But the thing that we must note here is that the word is gone out of God's mouth in righteousness. So where does righteousness come from? Out of the mouth of God. Things that he speaks are the things of righteousness. And we will see what the Bible tells us about his righteousness. Isaiah 5 verse 16 says, But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. So here we see that holiness and righteousness walk hand in hand, because God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness, in his way of doing things, because his way is the holy way. He is a holy God. So righteousness and holiness walk hand in hand. And we must understand this, that God who is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness, in his way of doing things. Jeremiah 23 verse 5 and 6 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. And that branch referred to Jesus. And the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. And in Hebrew, it is Yahweh Tzedek or Yahweh Tzedkenu. 
That is the Lord, our righteousness. So righteousness comes from the mouth of God. God is known and is sanctified by his righteousness. The name of Jesus is the Lord, our righteousness. And then the following verse really blessed me when I read it the first time. Isaiah 59 verse 17 says, For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. And I thought, this is very interesting that God puts on righteousness as a breastplate. And then I saw that he wants exactly the same thing for us. In Ephesians 6 verse 14, he says, when he speaks about the armor of God, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Oh, wow. Look at that. God himself is wearing the breastplate of righteousness. And then he says to us, my children, I want you to wear the breastplate of righteousness, the breastplate of God's way of doing things. Why? You see, because when I wear the breastplate of God's way of doing things, when sin comes, the arrows of sin, the arrows of temptation, when they come, they just bounce off that breastplate. They bounce away from that breastplate. Why? Because I'm wearing the breastplate of God's way of doing things. I'm not wearing a breastplate that is penetrated by these, these arrows of temptation and sin anymore. I don't take that anymore. No, those arrows bounce off the breastplate that I'm wearing. The same breastplate that God in heaven is wearing. The breastplate of righteousness. Psalm 23 verse 1 to 6 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me, look at this now, in the paths of righteousness. Why? For His name's sake. So, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Why? Because righteousness goes out of His mouth. Righteousness is what sanctifies him. Righteousness is what his name is. Righteousness is what he wears as a breastplate. So now he leads us in his way of doing things. Why? So that his name will be glorified. If people look at us and they can say, I can see you walk in the footsteps of your heavenly father. I can see that you are walking in his footsteps in the paths of righteousness that he is leading you upon. And then God is glorified thereby, not you and I. God is exalted because of that, because he leads me in those paths. Psalm 97 verse 1 and 2 says, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Interesting thing there. Even his throne stands upon righteousness. We must understand one thing. One day, when we stand before his throne, we will stand there as a result of his grace. We who are saved. Because the Bible says, by grace you are saved. And not by your own works, so that no man can boast. See, the moment that I receive the Lord Jesus in my life, that grace become mine. Because the moment that I say, I believe that God raised Jesus out of, out of death, then I can say, but through faith, I am also saved by grace. Not by the works of any man, lest any man should boast. So, I don't boast in anything but in my King and Lord and Savior. By His grace we are saved. So, we will stand there as a result of His grace. But we will be standing upon righteousness because His throne stands upon righteousness. What an awesome God we serve. At number two, let us now look at the question, what must I do with righteousness? Psalm 4 verse 5 says, Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. You see, this is a sacrifice that we can offer God. The sacrifices of righteousness. The sacrifices of doing His way of doing things in our normal everyday lives. When we do that, we are offering sacrifices of righteousness and thereby putting our trust in the Lord, trusting Him. 
that what he says, he's a righteous God, that his righteousness will also protect me. His righteousness will also lead me. His righteousness will always be there for me as well because I offer sacrifices of righteousness in my life and I am putting my trust in the Lord. Hosea 10 verse 12 says, Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. And remember when we read about the Lord in capital letters like this in the King James Version, L-O-R-D there, it's always in the Hebrew yod Hey vav Hey, because our Father's name in Hebrew is Yahweh. So sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. Because if I sow God's way of doing things in my life, I will reap His mercy in my life. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord. And to seek the Lord takes time, my brother and my sister. It means you spend time with God. You spend time with His Word. Even now, while the world is in lockdown, you have time to seek the Lord, to seek His Word, to take your Bible, to get a Bible app on your phone if you don't have a physical Bible. Download the Bible for yourself. Get it on social media somewhere, download a Bible and start to read the Word of God for yourself. It is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. Because when you seek Him and you seek His Word, He will rain His way of doing things on you and in your life and teach you how to do that. And then we read in Matthew 5 or 6 this wonderful uh, promise that says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. My brother and sister, you know what? Get a hunger and a thirst for His righteousness. And you will only learn that here. By spending time in His Word, by spending time with Him in prayer, and just in conversation with Him. Because remember, prayer is not always these high-sounding words. Prayer is a conversation, a normal daily conversation with your Heavenly Father. Father, I need to learn your righteousness. Father, please, through your Holy Spirit, teach me your righteousness. Teach me your way of doing things. Father, I need to learn your righteousness in my marriage. Father, I need to learn your righteousness in my relationship with my wife, my children, my colleagues, whatever the case may be. And through his Holy Spirit, if you are willing to be taught, he will reveal his scriptures to you. He will reveal himself to you, speaking in your heart. That still soft voice of the Holy Spirit. And if you start to learn to live in His righteousness, blessed are you. Blessed are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because this is what the Bible says. You will be blessed and you will be fed by the Word of God and by His Holy Spirit. At number three, let us now look at what are the consequences of righteousness. Proverbs 11 verse 19 says, As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. So righteousness, God's way of doing things, will let me live. Let me live a good life now and also eternal life that is waiting for me. But if I pursue evil, saying, Ah, you know what? I'm saved I'm justified. I can keep on doing what I want because God loves me just as I am. I don't have to change anything. You are pursuing evil and you're pursuing it to your own death. No, righteousness tends to life. Righteousness pulls you to live the way that God wants you to live. And then we know eternal life is also waiting for us to be with Him. Psalm 106 verse 3 says, Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. I want you not to miss that word now. Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that does righteousness at all times. So righteousness I see here is something that I must do at all times. All times means Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, January, February, March, April, May. You get the idea. He that doeth righteousness at all times will be blessed. 
If you do God's way of doing things in your marriage, in your relationship with your children, in the way you speak to the people around you, your colleagues at work, people working in your house, whatever the case may be, blessed are you. Blessed are you if you keep judgment and if you do righteousness at all times. So through this, I have learned that justification is something I receive. Righteousness is something I must do. So many people sometimes confuse these two words. They say, no, but you know, I'm justified. Just as if I had never sinned. I'm justified by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, amen, you are. But that now leads to a second thing. The moment that I understand that I'm justified by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, just as if I had never sinned, I now start to do His righteousness. I am so thankful for His grace that justifies me. I am so thankful that I am saved by His grace that I now want to start to do His way of doing things. So justification is something I receive. Righteousness is something I must do. Because in Luke 6 verse 46, Jesus says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. So if I say you must do righteousness, why are you still standing on, oh, but I'm justified. I don't have to do anything anymore. You see, beware the deception. Yes, the moment I receive the Lord Jesus, I am justified. But after having received Him, after being justified by faith, by, and, and being saved by grace, I must start to do what he says. Because if there's something I learned the past 21 years about the Bible, is it is a book that says we must do things over and over and over. Proverbs 13 verse 6 says, Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. Can you see there? If I live in righteousness, if I do righteousness, if I walk in the paths of righteousness, following God who is righteous, then it will keep me in my way. But wickedness will overthrow the sinner. If I still want to sin and say, but I'm justified, I can keep on sinning, you will be overthrown, the Bible says. Isaiah 32 verse 17 says, And the work of righteousness shall be peace. Look at this. The work of righteousness shall be peace. You will have peace in your life, in your heart, if you live and do God's righteousness, and if you live according to His righteousness. And the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. Oh, wow. Quietness and assurance, peace. The peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and your mind, the Bible says. So, the work of righteousness in my life, will be peace. And the effects of righteousness in my life will be quietness and assurance forever. Because remember, I also have the YouTube video on Psalm 23 that says that He leads me besides the still waters. He will give me peace. Also, if I live in His righteousness. Jeremiah 9 verse 24, look at this now again. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, I am who? I am Yahweh, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord, saith Yahweh. So I am the Lord, which exercise. It means He does it Himself. He does these things. What does He do? He does loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. And in these things, he delights, the Bible says. It gives him satisfaction. He is delighted in doing righteousness. So that's why he expects the same from us. And then we read in Matthew 5 verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because my brother and my sister, the moment that you understand what I'm trying to say here today, and you start to speak to your other Christian brothers and sisters about righteousness, about doing God's way, they will immediately say, no, no, no. Don't be holier than thou. Don't think you're better than us now. You must not be too much about all this. You know, we are justified. 
God loves me just as I am. He doesn't care if I smoke or drink or sleep with the neighbor's wife. No, he loves me as I am. He sees me through the blood of Jesus. So they will persecute you for standing up for righteousness. But the Bible says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And John 16 verse 7 and 8 says, nevertheless, Jesus is speaking here. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. Who is the Comforter? The Holy Spirit. But if I depart, I will send Him unto you. And when He is come, He will reprove. That means He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So can you see when the Holy Spirit comes, what will He convict us of? Firstly, of sin. And secondly, of righteousness, of God's way of doing things in our normal lives and also of God's judgment if we do not listen. Romans 6 verse 19 says, For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, your body in other words, to be servants to righteousness unto holiness, because righteousness tends to holiness because the more I live in God's righteousness the more I will become holy as he says be ye holy as I'm holy I also have a whole video YouTube video on be ye holy on God's holiness and the way that he wants us to be holy like he is holy but I will only be able to start to do that when I start to do his righteousness Romans 10 verse 8 to 10 says but what saith it the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. My brother, my sister, if you've not yet done this in your life, whether you are an elder in the church, I was an elder in the church, I did not know this. And only when I started to do this for myself, I could now stand on the word of God to say, now I know that I am saved. Why? Because I confess the Lord Jesus with my mouth. And I believe with my heart that God has raised him from the dead physically. So I know that I am saved. But this verse proceeds to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Because if I believe these things, it leads to me starting to live in His righteousness, starting to do what God wants me to do. Because Proverbs 15 verse 9 says, The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but He loveth him that followeth after righteousness. So why would He love him that followeth after righteousness? Because righteousness is His name. Righteousness comes out of His mouth. Righteousness is one of the things that he exercises himself. Righteousness is his breastplate that he's wearing. Righteousness is the path that he leads us upon. So he loves him that followeth after righteousness. But I cannot do the things of the wicked and say, Oh, but God still loves me just as I am. I'm playing with eternity. 1 Timothy 6 verse 11 and 12 says, But thou, O man of God, but also a woman of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So look at that. It says to us, and it's an instruction, O man of God, O woman of God, follow after righteousness. Read your Bible. 200 and 89 or 259 verses, as I said, containing the words, the word righteousness. Ask the Lord, Lord, in this verse, what does that word righteousness now mean for me? How can I apply it to my life, to my marriage, to my finances, to my relationship with my colleagues or my children or my family or my friends? And through His Holy Spirit, He will lead you if you're willing to seek after Him and to follow after righteousness, walking in the paths of of righteousness so that he can be glorified in your life. At number four, let us end with, and from here onward, if you understand today what I'm trying to tell you regarding God's righteousness, what now from here onward? You have now understood what I'm trying to say, so what must you do 
from here onward. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, now look at the red part, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture from Genesis to Revelation is given for instruction in righteousness. We can learn what God taught Adam and Eve. We can learn what God taught David and Bathsheba. We can learn what God taught whoever. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for instruction in righteousness. Why? So that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So you and I can be truly furnished unto all good works if we are willing to learn from all of scripture and to receive instruction in righteousness from all of scripture. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So if you understand what I'm telling you today, God will increase the fruits of your righteousness, because you will suddenly start to walk in His righteousness more and more on a daily basis. You will understand what His righteousness asks of you and how to live according to that. And then we we'll read in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 and 8, Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but, but unto all them also that love his appearing. My brother and my sister, if you walk in the paths of righteousness, if you do righteousness, there is a crown of righteousness waiting for you one day. If you love his appearing, are you in this place yet? Can you also say, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, so I know there is a crown of righteousness waiting for me that day when I appear before the throne of the Lord? 1 Peter 2 verse 24 says, Who his own self, referring to Jesus, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Look at this. We being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. We cannot say, oh, you know, I'm saved by faith. I'm justified as if I'd never sinned. So now I can keep on doing the wrong things. God sees me through the blood of Jesus. No, he does not see my sin anymore. No, no, no. The Bible says we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. So I'm thankful for His grace. I'm justified by faith. But therefore, I, because of my thankfulness, now want to live in His righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And then, a last few verses that I want to end with, that are very, very important. And this one is 1 John 2, verse 28 and 29. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Beware that your belief that you are justified by faith and his grace is so much, you can just keep on sinning. He won't mind. Beware that that day when he comes, that you may not actually be ashamed when he comes. But read this now, the red part. It says, if ye know that he is righteous. Do we know that he is righteous? Oh, yes. We've seen it over and over and over today. He is righteous. Righteousness is His name. It comes out of His mouth. His throne stands on righteousness. So yes, if you know that He is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of Him. So everyone that does righteousness, if you do righteousness, you can say you are born of Him. So now the question is, if you do not do righteousness, does that then mean you are not born of Him? Or do you think I'm stretching it a bit now? Well, if you may think I'm stretching it a bit, let's just proceed and read the following verses. 1 John 3 verse 7 to 10 says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he, Jesus, is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. 
Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So my brother and my sister, if you might have said, but yeah, I'm justified by faith. I can do whatever I want. If you do not do righteousness, you cannot say, I'm born of God. Because these verses, you can go and read them for yourselves in your Bible. They say, if you do not do righteousness, you are not born of God. Because if you are really born of God, you will stop hiding behind your sins and saying, but by grace I'm saved, I'm justified, I can keep on sinning, God loves me. No, 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 no. If you do not do righteousness, these verses say, then you are not born of God. So this might be the day that you might be shocked into getting to a place of saying, wow, Lord, please forgive me for thinking that I had the label of Christian, but I did not do the things of righteousness that you wanted me to do. I really pray that the Holy Spirit of God will touch your heart today so that you will say, Lord, please forgive me. I receive you in my life. I repent of my sins. And thank you, Lord, for your grace. I now receive it by faith. And Lord, now teach me, please, through your word to do your righteousness so that you can be exalted and glorified in my life. Because remember, he's not a dead God. In Revelation 1 verse 17 and 18, Jesus says, I'm the first and the last. I'm he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And all honor and glory goes to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let us pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are God, our righteousness. Thank you that you teach us to walk in the paths of righteousness. Thank you that you lead us in your righteousness. Thank you that you wear the breastplate of righteousness and that you want us to wear the breastplates of righteousness. Thank you, Father, that you exercise righteousness upon this earth and that you want us to do righteousness as well so that we can say we know we are born of God because we do what God does, His righteousness. And Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will touch the hearts looking at this video to really stand up and to repent if they have hidden behind your grace and have made grace cheap. Because Lord, your grace is not cheap. You died for us. And thank you, Lord, that we can now also die to ourselves and to our worldly lives and live according to your righteousness. And Lord Jesus, we keep on crying out, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen. And you